Hey guys, um, welcome to Crossroad Garage. Um, I'm about to put together a bunch of different video footage of, I've been working on uh, some rust repair on, on old Wilma. Um, it may be a little bit cobbled together and I apologize about that, but I kind of got started and then got distracted on other projects and you know, it's back and forth a lot of different. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and make the footage flow. If it seems a little off, then I, I definitely apologize about that. But anyway, um, hope you enjoy it and I'll talk to you guys later. So today, I'm going to start tackling some of the uh, rust issues on uh, Wilma here. Um, I'm not ready to start in the floor back there yet, but I want to address this uh, cow section here. As you can see, it's, well, well somebody, somebody tried to patch it before, but anyway, um, so... I want to I want to replace replace this section. Um, I I want to get this out and see what's behind it. Um, I'm at least going to get up to the seam here, and when I go, I'm probably going to weld this seam solid. Um, I don't see much of a purpose for it. Uh, it I think it'll look a lot better just being a, a smooth panel. You know, making the cow look like one entire piece. Like I said, we're not doing a restoration on this. We're just doing, we're just building a fun little cruiser. Um, so uh, I need to start with uh, getting the door off. And uh, hopefully I got the, it's got those little uh, stars. I don't know if I have any big enough to get it off there, but hopefully I do. All right, guys. So uh, we got the passenger side door off. Trust me, that was no easy task. Um, if the cutting and deleting made you think it was well those bolts haven't been removed in 60 years um, and uh, so with a little help from some uh, PB blast and everything else uh, she's out and unfortunately my tripod's broke but I'll get you in here and I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing um, this, uh, this body panel seams up right here so I'm gonna try and uh, try and remove this. Um, try and get that. Uh, I'm gonna grind that down, and see if I can find where the spot welds are. If I can't, you know, then I'll just uh, start hammering it out. Um, and then I'm gonna remove that entire panel. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find some duct tape and uh and get my uh, get my tripod set back up. So, but in the meantime, that's what we got happening. So anyway, I got this seam separated from the body. Um, I went around to the inside here and was looking. It's actually not bad when you get up into this area. Um, definitely got some rust going on down in this area here. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just going to, I think I'm gonna get out the uh, the plasma cutter and I think I'm just gonna cut it here and then down through here um, and uh, that way I don't have to worry about trying to reform this perfectly um, it's just gonna make my life a little easier this piece here that I pulled off earlier I I don't even see what was holding it on there unless it was just Bondo holding it on because this Bondo is an eighth of an inch thick I mean I I don't know what they had going on but this is I don't see rust behind there so I don't know if there was a dent they were trying to fix um, I didn't see that either so anyway we're just gonna replace the whole panel so, so while I'm in here I thought I'd show you some of the uh, work we have in front of us um, I 
don't know what happened there, but uh, you know, we got we we got some work. There's another one of those uh, little dents. Um, so we're gonna. That should be easy enough to straighten out, though. Um, like I say, we're not going for a perfect uh, truck here. Um, but I do want to clean this stuff up. I want it to look nice. Um, you know. So basically, I've uh, drawn the lines where I want to cut, and I got this uh, piece of I, I think it's a quarter inch. Uh, stuck a couple magnets up there, just kind of helping. Just kind of create. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> so basically, I uh, took this piece of quarter inch uh, stock here and I drew my lines where I wanted to cut and I just kind of got them clamped on there just to give me a guide with the uh, plasma cutter. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but that's all right. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get to cutting on this and uh, see what happens. So, as you can see, I'm still learning the plasma cutter, but that... Some really good shape on this side. So anyway, um, I'm happy with that plasma cutter so far. Um, yeah, so now that I'm inside here, I can clean this up. I got some rust down. down in this area, I need to repair. Um, looks like they put a piece behind that, so I'll see what's going on there. We are making progress at this point. Um, so, and this is a, you know, I'll use this as a template, and uh, I'll get in here and I'll clean up where I kind of messed up with the. Uh, you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a nice straight line over here. Though I fudged up a little bit, my fault. So, anyway, let's keep rolling. All right, so. I had a uh, had some holes down through here. What I did was I went ahead and just kind of plug walled them. I I got this piece of uh just half inch copper. I just flattened one in with a hammer and I use that prop up back there and just kind of backfill stuff. Um, it does get hot, so I need to make a handle for this one day. But anyway, um, as I'm looking, checking things out down here, this area here. Looks like somebody welded a patch panel behind there, um, but I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, take the old cutoff wheel and I'm going to cut off this old stuff. I'm going to see what we got going on because I have a feeling we're going to have to remake this lower edge. Um, so I may just make a piece that goes over top of that. Kind of got in here and cleaned some of this up, cleaned some of this rust up, so that we can, you know, wipe it down here in a few minutes, get that in primer. Um, and then uh, get on to building this outer piece. Hopefully, might be building that piece. I don't know. We'll see.
All right, so basically what I did was I was able to, uh, this piece that they put in there, I was able to cut the existing rust out, kind of stitch weld the two together, which they should have done in the first place, but they didn't remove the solder panel, so they, they couldn't have gotten here to do it anyway. Um, <clears throat> ground those down a little bit. I'm not super concerned with those being flat and pretty because this is all dead space. Um, luckily underneath here, not frosted. Um, so I think we're ready to uh, clean this up, throw a little bit of primer on this, then I'm gonna start building this panel here. And then we'll, uh, once we got that built, we'll get into this. Sorry, we'll get into this and, uh, and we'll see what's going on there. Because obviously this needs to finish down to here, I believe. I got, I'll look at the other side. I'm not sure exactly how it works with the fenders mounting. I think the fenders mount back to here. Um, so I gotta, I gotta check that out a little bit. So, uh, yeah, let's get to do some cleaning. So I'm just gonna take some, uh, Duplicolor acetone, wipe this all down. Um, you know, just clean it up so that the, uh, get the primer to stick on there. That's all we're gonna do is just some primer in here. We just want something on there to kind of prevent it from rusting anymore. This acetone dries really quick. It's pretty much isopropyl alcohol, I think. I think that's what it smells like. It dries about that fast as well. Wipe that down. Okay, it's kind of strong. Might need a respirator. So today we're using. Can you see that? It's Krylon Rust Tough Enamel Primer. Eliminates rust, prime surface. So that's what we need. We, we, we want to eliminate rust and we want to prime the surface. So that's why I went with this one. Plus, it was the cheapest they had. I, I gotta find a fan. I'm dying. And I, I know that may seem like an excessive amount of primer for this small area, but th this is the last chance we're gonna have to get in here. Um, so I'm gonna let that dry for a second, and then I'm gonna hit it some more. Um, because, like I say, once we uh, once we button this up, that's it. Um, no getting in here after that. Hey guys, welcome back to Crossroad Garage. So today I'm going to get back on the willies a little bit. Um, I am still in that transitional period where I'm waiting for parts for seems like everything. Uh, so I ran up to the hardware store and I picked up a piece of a uh, 16 gauge sheet metal and I'm just going to make one of the patch panels. Um, you know, just to kind of get you a video out there. Uh, so, anyway, um, we'll get to it here in a second. So, anyway, guys, um, went up to the hardware store and I picked up this uh, piece of 2x2, uh, two two, um, 16 gauge. This is the panel that I cut off um, 
for the front cowl section on the uh, on the willies. Um, it kind of fell apart. It's got, I mean, this bondo is a good eighth of an inch thick going through there. I I don't know what they're, I don't know what was going on. But anyway, so we're going to have to, as you can see, looking at this, we're going to have to build this in a couple sections and, you know, just kind of, that's, that's a washing machine. That's nice. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to build this in a couple sections and then we're going to have to, uh, you know, just assemble it. But you know what, I'm tired of uh, sitting around waiting on stuff and I can't get to the uh, metal store um, probably for a couple more days now, um, maybe tomorrow, I don't, I don't know, by the end of the week. Um, so this was the best Lowe's had. Um, you know, in these places, man, they're, it's getting hard to find metal at your local hardware store anymore. Um, anything good and it's expensive i think this was i don't i want to say 34 dollars for this piece but considering the replacement panel through the willie's uh um I, I can't remember which willie's site it is that sells a replacement panel for this but i want to say it's 140 dollars so we're saving 100 dollars by doing it ourselves even though we are going to have to build it in sections so I'm going to get to it. I'm going to start uh, tracing some of this stuff out and uh, cutting it and working it to fit, and we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is, is it's got this bend here. It's a uh, quarter inch in, and then it's, what, what is it? It's, uh, it's a half inch out, and this part mounts to the, uh, to the door sill. So... I think I'm just going to make all that separate. I don't see where I have much of a choice. Um, so. so, if I try to put the two pieces together, I'm, I'm a good inch short there. So I'm going to have to make this section separate and weld it all up. So. That's going to be 19 and 3 quarters. I'm going, to, I'm going to cut that to 19 and 3 quarters. So, sorry about the washing machine over there, but it is, uh, it is Sunday. I'm going to go back to work tomorrow. So this is going to be our first section we're going to cut out, and let's go ahead and plot out the other sections. I don't know if this knockout right here needs to be in there or not. So I'm going to take this back over there and see what's going on with that.
All right. So these two pieces here are going to make that panel outside of this lip that I've got going on here. Um, and some of you might be asking why I don't just take it over to the bender, but that brake press absolutely sucks. Um, and it's not going to bend 16 gauge. Um, so I'm not, I'm not even going to fight around with do it, trying it um, because I, I know it won't do it. <coughs> Anyway, it's a it's a little rough. Um, I did go ahead and cut it a little bit big. Um, I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna use the uh, cutoff wheel to kind of. I don't, I don't want to blow through too much metal on this lower section. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll we'll shape it up as we go. Well, there's a cautionary tale for you. I cut right through my welding table. All right, so just kind of came through here with a worn out flap disc, just kind of, you know, because they, they put so much oil and stuff on these. And you, you can see it's kind of kind of baked into that. So I wanted to create a, a nice space to weld to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and weld these two pieces together. Um, and then uh, we'll start massaging everything as we're going along over there. Um, but my lengths are fine. Um, you know, I got a little extra to play with. So that's going to be my next step is getting these welded together and then uh, uh, start figuring it out from there. Um, basically, we're reverse engineering the jigsaw puzzle here. So anyway, I'm just going to kind of go through here and stitch weld this. And uh, so I'll, I'll time lapse this for you because it's going to take a while. You can see she's uh, starting to flip up here a little bit, so you know, which, which is going to be fine. Once this is together, I'll be able to, you know, bend it down a little bit. Um, but basically, when I, when I'm doing these stitch welds, I like to I like to crank the uh, the welder up and just kind of get in there and zap a little weld real quick and get away from it um, so you know try to keep as little heat as possible sometimes it takes more heat to create less heat if that makes sense like if I turn my welder all the way down if I turned it down to try and get a less heat transfer I'm gonna wind up being on the metal longer than if I have it up and just zap and be done with it rather than zzzzt, zzzzt. you know now I can come in and I can be like zzzt, 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 zzzt. does that make sense I don't know maybe it makes sense that's just how I do it I, I don't know if it's right or not I'm from Kentucky what, what do I know all right this is cooled down pretty good so I'll move on
All right, so now that it's getting hard to tell where I haven't gotten and where I have gotten, I'm going to go ahead and bring the flap disc in, the, uh, the worn out flap disc. I'm going to let that cool a second. And uh, I'm going to hit this down, and that, that's going to reveal to me, you know, where I need to hit still. So. So, as you can see, this panel's looking pretty good. I've, I've got most of it welded together. Um, so, I'm going to let this cool for a minute, and then uh, I'm going to get back in here and uh, lay down some more uh, stitch welds. So, y'all stick around. So, anyway, guys, I went ahead and finished that, and hit that with the flap disc. We are, we are going to require a little body filler in here, but that's okay. Um, it's, a, it's a nice solid piece of metal now. It's got, got a little bit of a warp to it. I need to try to bend that out a little bit. That'll do it. Once we uh, once we weld this up on there, you know we'll we'll be able to massage it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good solid welds all the way through. Um, I'm happy so far. Um, so let me get that sticker off there. But anyway, um, I'm gonna go. Uh, Set this up on there. I'll take you guys over there with me. We'll take a look at it and uh, we'll see uh, what kind of progress we're making. We'll take the pen. That. Um, so yeah. Well, anyway, I think my plan of attack here is going to be to set it up here, throw a couple tack welds into place kind of trace out what I, where I need to cut next. And I'm just going to pop those tack welds off there. I think that's going to be the easiest route for me to go at this point. Um, because these little panel, they suck. They're terrible. Um, it's, I, I don't know, maybe I'm not using them right, but I cannot get the panel lined up properly with those to save my life. Um, and unfortunately, there's, you know, no place for me to put a Clico, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to tack weld it and see what happens from there. So I'll be back with you guys in just a minute once I got it tacked up and we'll start doing some stuff. All right. So guys, I'm going to take me a quick coffee break because, well, it's well deserved, you know. But I have a question for y'all. So you know this as the I believe it's a 300. I don't know. Um, never really dug that far into it. The uh, the Ford Straight Six. Now, my plan was to pull that, um, put a small block Chevy in it, you know, because they are probably the most reliable engines on the planet. I wasn't going to do an LS swap. I I really feel it's overdone, and I don't like all the digi digital stuff. You know, it's it's. It, I'm not gonna lie, it scares me a little bit. Um, but uh, anyway, um, 
came across a guy who has a 400 Chrysler engine with, I believe it's the, I don't now, I don't, don't yell at me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's a 727 transmission. I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I think that's what it is, 727. Um, now, it came out of a motorhome. It's got very low miles on it, which, you know, it's pretty normal for a motorhome, you know. You, you know how it goes. People buy those. They think we're going to take a bunch of family trips with them, and they take them out, you know, once a year, and then the motorhome just rots and falls apart. Um, so I think this has about 34, 35,000 miles on it. He's got a good price on it. I believe it is the four barrel, which puts it up to a whopping, I think, 190, 200 horsepower. I, some of them, something in that range. Um, so, you know, this, this isn't exactly a Mopar, but it later in time was owned by the Chrysler Corporation, or is today. Um, so, uh, so I thought it might be, you know, neat to do, but at the same time, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't really know much about Chrysler engines. I'm thinking I could probably do a cam swap, some other stuff on it, and uh, keep the price relatively low, gain a little bit of horsepower. I'm not looking to make a, a race car out of this, but I want something that I can, you know, I'd like to go on the, uh, the uh, hot rod power tour, stuff like that, which is, you know, a thousand mile trip or something, and I think it starts uh, 500 miles for me to begin with. Um, but anyway, I don't really think that little six banger is going to pull me down the highway that well. Um, so, what's your opinion? What would you do if you were building this? W would you go with the Chrysler? I believe the 400 is considered a big block. I think it's a little brother to the 440. Um, again, I don't know Chrysler's that well, um, so, you know, slam me in the comments. Um, but, uh, or would you stick with the idea of doing a, uh, a 350 in it, you know, just a small block Chevy, um, you know, something, something completely reliable. I don't know how reliable those Chrysler's are. Um, I saw it for sale on Facebook. Turns out it's a guy that I believe I went to high school with him. His name is really familiar. Um, and he doesn't live too far from here. Um, so I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm really at a crossroads on this. But if I'm going to snag it up, I need to snag it up soon um, because I don't see it at the price he's got for the engine and transmission. It looks to be a complete engine with all the accessories and everything on it, I don't see it sitting around long at the price that he has it at. I don't think it's a super well-desired motor, but, you know, somebody doing a, a, a Mopar project might want it, um, you know, and I know Mopars are getting kind of hot nowadays. Um, people seem to really like them. I think a lot of people are doing that, whatever that newer him he is the swap you know just like everybody's doing the ls swaps but somebody might want it um i'm sure somebody does my question to you is what would you do in my shoes um so uh yeah anyway i'm gonna drink my coffee i'm gonna let you all stew on that drop it down in the comments uh you know let me know what you because I'm, I'm such at a crossroads on this, you know, I really am, um, because 350 Chevrolet engines, believe it or not, are getting hard to come by. Um, they, they, they really are, and they're pricey when you do come across them. If I get one, I'm probably going to order a crate engine just to save myself the headaches, because I'm noticing them a 350 with the you know somebody repainted it real quick and said oh you know it's a 
excellent motor. You can tell, you can see all the overspray on all over the thing. And they're wanting, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars for a motor, and it has none of the accessories, no carburetor, anything. Everything's, you know, you're getting a, a block in heads. Um, you know, at that point, I'm not going to trust it enough, and I'm just going to order a crate engine. Um, but I don't know. You drop down there in the comments what you would do, and I'll I'll chew on wait, I'll chew on your all thoughts for a little bit, but make it fast because I got to move on this thing if I'm going to get it. So I'll finish my coffee and then we'll get back to this. All right. Okay, guys. So took a little more work than I thought. Had to do a little finessing, um, but I do have this panel. It's tacked in a few spots. I am blowing right through. I I did I never checked the gauge to see what this is. Um, I just I assumed it was 16, but I might have to turn my welder down. Um, but next part I need to make is I need a piece here. Try to put that bend in there. And then what I'll do is I'll plug weld it into here onto the body and then I'll stitch weld it along this side basically this panel will be complete um, so uh, you know let me, let me see if I can actually bend a piece of the uh, 16 gauge um, and I didn't I just now thought of this but this piece wasn't long enough so I may have to take two pieces of the 16 gauge to create that I don't know. We're going to see. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to get on to now. Um, this is still, it's going to require some body work on it. I'm going to have to, you know, one, I think I can reach, yeah, I can reach around here. So it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt to kind of stitch weld that. Um, unless I can find something to put back there to prop it out for me. So... Anyway, uh, let me move on to the next step, which next step may just be doing this tacking on this. Uh, I may try and get some tacks in over here, actually. So, Alright guys, so I jumped ahead on you a few steps. Uh, I started going ahead and just kind of stitch welding this in. Um, and then I stopped, walked away from it, let it cool down. And then I, I tried to bend this 16 gauge over on my uh, fabulous uh, Jegs um, handbrake, and I broke the brake. So uh, now I got to repair that in the future. So that's great. Uh, long story short, do not try to bend 16 gauge on it. Um, anyway, so. What I got is a piece of 16 gauge. Just got it, uh, some Clecos holding it in right now, um, running down along this panel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece, and like I say, we're, we're obviously we're building this in multiple sections. I'm going to take this piece, and it lines up real nice right here. So I'm just going to throw a magnet on it. Hopefully it holds. I don't. It, Apparently it's not going to hold. Um, I've got another magnet. Not going to hold. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some tacks. I'm going to push this over to meet up with this panel. I'm just going to run some tacks down through here and this this has got a curve as it comes down so I'm gonna have to cut this and kind of you know you know what I'm saying um, and then I'm gonna pop it off I'm gonna take it off the body clean it up um, mark it where it needs to be cut along this edge and along this edge and then I'm gonna come back and then I'll continue the stitch welding down through here 
So yeah, it, it, it's a lot of work to build this panel. Um, you know, obviously I'm building it in one, two, three, four sections. Um, but you know, if this was a video of some guy just ordering the replacement panel, would it be exciting? No, anybody can do that. Um, really I'm just cheap and I'm not going to do it when I can spend $33 so anyway um yeah let me uh let me get on that and I'll come back and you know I'll just keep giving you updates as I'm going along here so all right before I go to lunch I just pulled this piece off here and I just wanted to kind of show it to you um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along this side here was actually this lip here was actually inside here so I'm going to cut that down nice and smooth I've got my lines marked here and over here where I need to cut this to get it all nice and smooth and then we'll come back and we'll put it back into place um, with the Clecos probably maybe I don't know but uh, what I'll wind up doing is I'll wind up blowing out these eighth inch holes and uh, doing a rosé welds um, and just kind of getting that into that spot to hold it so anyway now i'm going to grab some lunch and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to start cutting on this because i'm getting hungry y'all can see the curve that we got going on i mean it's it's very gradual but you know i think this whole thing's going to turn out nice um you know we're probably going to have to definitely give it a skim coat of uh some body filler but you know I don't mind doing a skim coat of body filler as long as you're not doing chicken wire and you know everything else to cover up holes um, so yeah I'm gonna quit talking now um, I'll see you guys in a bit all right guys well I got this piece uh, cut up you know trimmed up clear code back in um, it's fitting pretty nice I mean I'll run through there with the uh, flap disc but anyway right now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start putting some uh, stitch welds down through here um, and get this piece to where it's not gonna come loose um, so and then I'm gonna do some uh, rosette welds um, onto the body here Yeah, so I think it's going to turn out pretty nice, um, you know, so I, I'm going to do that real quick, um, and uh, then, then we'll see where we're at. Alright, so I got the stitch welds, you know, not completed, but good enough for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull these Clecos out, and then I want to get inside here um, where these two pieces are meeting up at this point. Um, so. By the way, if you've been looking for some Clecos, I bought these off of Amazon. They're eighth inch uh, MRO tools. Um, they come with a little bag. You get 50 of them. You get the pliers. Um, I just took my eighth inch drill bit and threw it in there. Uh, you know, kind of keep it with it. Um, I don't know how much it was, though. I want to say it was like. $40? I, I don't know. $40, we're going to say. Um, 
and it's well worth it. So, you know, if you're doing some body work, um, I, I would definitely suggest, you know, checking those out. I mean, they, they seem to be pretty good. I don't know. All right, back to it. Alright, so this is coming together nicely. Um, bring in here, you know. Basically, just going through there, stitch weld, and it's going to be going to be a lot of cleanup work, but you know, um, kind of is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to get these. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to get those blown out a little bit, those holes, and uh, I'm going to do a rosé pattern on them, um, and uh, I'm going to go on from there, so be right back. Alright, so I got these, uh, these plug welded, so now they're, you know, basically just attaching it to the body. Um, so yeah, we'll come back through and grind all this down when we're grinding down all these uh, stitch welds and everything. It'll turn out nice and clean. Um, it's just a lot of work. Alright guys, so I still got some welding to do. I gotta go through here. I wanted to grind it down, see where I still needed to hit. Um, but as you can tell, I mean, this edge here, I'm really happy with that. That's a nice clean edge. Um, like I say, I still gotta go in there and weld. Still got to clean up these welds through here. Still got a weld underneath here. So there's uh, there's definitely still some more work to go on it, but you know, all in all, I'm I'm happy with the progress so far. I think it's going to turn out great. Um, so uh, you know, it's it's already looking 100% better than when I than what I started with. So um, yeah, so you know, I mean, this is. You know, an afternoon's worth of work. Uh, you know, probably have another afternoon in finishing it up. Um, so yeah, don't don't be. You know, guys, don't be afraid to get out there and and just try. You know, I mean, like I say, this panel's like a hundred and forty dollars. I think that uh, piece of sixteen gauge was like thirty four dollars, maybe at. Uh, I don't know if I got a Lowe's or Home Depot or the local hardware store. I think I'm thinking it was Lowe's. It was like thirty-four dollars. So you know, I saved a little over a hundred dollars by doing it myself. Um, you know, and and you know, cut it down into manageable pieces. This is what five, six pieces that it took to make this. Um, you know, do do what you got to do. You know, I mean. You know, these big fancy companies, they throw it and they stamp it and they kick it out to you. And, you know, half the time, probably more than half the time, it's not right anyway. And, and you still wind up doing metal work on it. Um, but this is, you know, and I don't even know that it's 16 gauge that you receive. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I don't know is what I'm saying. I don't know. Um, but anyway, if you wouldn't mind... Go over to my Instagram. I think it pops up here. I'm not sure. One of these two sides. Um, give me a follow. You know, I appreciate it. I'll follow you back. Um, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, you know, try, really trying to build this uh, channel, um, get it going a little bit better. Um, so, uh, anyway, um, yeah, I will uh, be back on this as soon as possible. Um, like I say, I do have some stuff coming in for this. Also, check out, if you haven't, the I'm giving away a lowrider bicycle that I'm building. Um, that's more for fun than anything. Um, but, yeah, um, also to try and get my subscriber count up, you know. Hey. But, uh, anyway, um, yeah, stay warm out there. Um, I, I don't know where you live, but here in Kentucky, it is freezing. I mean, it's cold. So, uh. Yeah, y'all have a good day, and I'll see ya.